If you are a micro four foot shooter and look at buying a lens that is a little bit wider, a little bit faster than your kit lens so that you can use it for landscape, architectural, astrophotography or vlogging, then you should check out this new Laowa 10mm ZOD f2 lens. Hello, good morning everyone, which one here? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another lens review and this time it is the Laowa 10mm f2 lens. This is a really compact, very lightweight lens from Laowa designed for micro forward camera. It is also a ZOD lens which means it should have very low distortion. So let's start the review by look at the design and build quality of this lens first. This Laowa 10mm f2 lens is a many focus lens just like all the other Laowa lenses. This is the second micro forward lens that Laowa released after they officially joined the micro forward group. And because of that, there is the electronic contacts here. So what that means is even though it is a many focus lens, but it does have the electronic communication from the lens to the camera. That means when you are doing manual focus, the camera would detect that you are doing the focus change and it will do the automatic pop-up the zoom in window for you to adjust your menu focus and also when you take the picture the camera would know what is the focal length of the lens without you have to manually enter it so that if you look at the EXIF data you can see the focal length of the lens that you're using as well as the aperture that you are shooting and also because of that it doesn't need to have the mechanical aperture ring at the top so there's no aperture ring at the top and it only has the focus ring here and that means you would adjust the aperture from the camera just like other native micro four foot lenses. The focus ring feel very nice. The travel is around 90 degrees from the minimum focus distance to infinity and there's a hard stop at the end of the focus ring travel. So overall the lens feels very solid because it has a very nice metal construction just like other lower lenses and it is very very lightweight. The weight of this lens is only 125 gram which make it probably one of the lightest micro forward lens that is available. The lens has a 46 millimeter front filter thread and also it comes with a removable lens hood which clicks onto the lens very nicely. And if you look at the size of this lens, it is also very small. Compare it with my 1260 Lumix kit lens. You can see the lower is quite a bit smaller. It's like less than half the height of my 1260 kit lens. To give you a better idea how compact this lens is, let me put it onto my G85. And you can see how compact this lens is. Look at how cute and how small it is. So it is great if you have a smaller micro forward camera, for example, the Panasonic Lumix GX85 or the Olympus Pen Series camera, that would make it a very lightweight and compact camera setup that you can easily carry with you anywhere. Okay, before we start talking about the image quality, let's go out and shoot some video using this lens first. A lot of people like to use micro forward camera for vlogging because the camera is small and also the lenses are small. However, there are actually not that many wide angle lens that is suitable for vlogging. Most of the kit lens starts at either 12mm or 14mm, which is not really that wide if you want to use it for vlogging. If you're using a J5, it's probably okay. But if you are using a camera like the one I'm using, the G85, which has a little bit of crop when you are shooting 4K, then the 12mm lens is really a little bit too narrow, too tight when you use it for vlogging. Your face will fill up the frame probably more than what you like it to be. So when I talk to a lot of other micro forward shooters, I think we all pretty much agree that it would be great if there is a maybe 9mm or 10mm lens that is compact and also a bit fast, maybe f2 or so, 
then that would be perfect. So I'm not too sure if Lawa actually designed this lens especially for vlogging, but look at the specs. It's a 10 mm f2 lens and also quite compact. It make it pretty much like a perfect lens for vlogging. I guess the only downside using this Lawa 10 mm f2 lens for vlogging is it is a manual focus only lens. So if people who want to completely um, everything auto having auto focus then it may not be quite the lens that they will want to use but because 10mm is quite a wide angle lens so you actually get quite a deep depth of view when you are shooting with this lens so manual focus is not that hard and also because it is a completely mechanical lens so uh, to adjust the focus you can just easily look at the um, the scale on the focus ring and you can get it pretty quickly so yeah if you are looking at doing some vlogging with a micro forward camera i definitely recommend you to check out this lower 10 mm f2 lens okay now let's continue the review and talk about the image quality and as usual let's start with the image sharpness first the center sharpness of this 10 mm lower lens is excellent even at the maximum aperture. Zoom in and look at this photo that I shot at f2 and you can see the center sharpness is excellent. When I stop down the lens, the center sharpness actually doesn't improve much at all. I do see some improvement in micro contrast when I stop down to around f4 or f5.6 but overall, I would be perfectly happy with the center sharpness even when shooting at the maximum aperture. If you look at the corners, I would say even at the maximum aperture, the corner sharpness is already pretty okay. I won't say it is super sharp, but the corner sharpness is definitely more than acceptable. When you stop down the lens, the corner sharpness does improve a little bit, but I guess if you look at the corner, the biggest difference when you compare the wide open shot to the one that you have stopped down a little bit is actually the brightness that is caused by the difference in vignetting, which is something I'm going to talk about next. Probably because of the very compact design of this lens, vignetting is not the strongest area of this lower 10 mm f2 lens. Look at the sample photo I shot at the maximum aperture. You can definitely see quite a bit of vignetting at f2. Stop down to f2.8, vignetting is still quite noticeable. Stop down to f4, then vignetting is now much better. I would say if you are taking real world photo that doesn't have a uniform background, photo that you shot at f4, you probably would not notice any vignetting. Chromatic aberration is very well controlled by this lens. There is very minimal amount of color fringing. When I go through and look at all my samples photos that I shot, even the one at f2, I don't really see any color fringing in most of my photos. Lauer called this 10mm f2 lens a COD lens, so it's not really surprising that there is only a very minimal amount of distortion when shooting far away scene. Look at all these photos that I shot with this lens, you can see there is virtually no distortion even if you look at all these straight vertical and horizontal lines in the photo. In terms of lens flare control, I would say under most shooting condition, there is only very minimal amount of lens flare. However, when there is a very bright light source that is in front of the lens, and if you are shooting at the maximum aperture, sometimes you will see some not really pleasant looking um, rainbow-ish color lens flare that is visible no matter you are taking photo or video. I do notice once you stop down the lens a bit, even at f2.8, the amount of those rainbow color lens flare would be greatly reduced. Lauer seems to really like the 5 braid diagram design for their lenses, so this 10mm f2 lens is the same. If you stop down the lens to around f8, you can have some very nice 10 point sun star in your photo. And if you stop down your lens all the way to the minimum aperture f22, and you can get some crazily sharp and long sun stars. A 10 mm f2 lens means it could be a good lens for doing astrophotography. So I did some quick tests just outside my house. So this is a photo I shot at the maximum aperture f2. 
if we zoom in the photo, you will see that the coma control is actually pretty good even if you look at the corner at 200% zoom. So I would say if you want to have an affordable lens for astrophotography, this lower lens could be quite a good choice. There are many things that will make you like this lower 10mm f2 ZUD lens. It is a native micro four foot lens with the electronic contents. So that means if you compare it with most other third party micro four foot lenses in the market that doesn't have the electronic contents, it definitely has many advantages. For example, when you are changing the focus, the camera will automatically pop up that zoom in view for you to fine tune your focus a lot more accurately and quicker. Optical wise, even though there are a few things that lower could improve, for example, lens flare or vignetting, but overall, I think lower did a pretty good job. The lens is very sharp. There is virtually no distortion. CA control, comma are both very good and the sun stars are also very beautiful. But what I really like about this lens is just how compact, how lightweight it is. I know a lot of micro four foot shooters are looking for a lens that is a little bit wider, a little bit faster than the kit lens, but you also want the lens to be quite compact and also quite affordable. So this $399 Lawa Tamu F2 lens, as you can see, it is very compact very lightweight and if you do a bit of rocking with your micro four foot camera with a 12mm lens and find the field of view a little bit too tight, this 10mm lower lens would give you a little bit wider field of view which may be exactly what you want. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video and if you have any question about this lower lens, please feel free to drop a comment below.